Good morning. I just realized I don't have a mic. So the people sitting out in the cars can fall asleep. <laughs> so can you get the mic, please, for me? Do you know where it is? Okay. I'm going to go find the key. You're going to go find the key? Okay. I have a hunch that there's some visitors here today. Am I correct? No visitors? No visitors? Oh, well, there's... If you want to use that mic and now you're hooked up, just make sure it's turned on. Testing, testing, is it on? Now it's on. Okay, uh, while we, I'll try and speak loud, because I understand last time I was here, they couldn't hear me out in the car. So glad to have you all, I, and I'm glad to see the kids here with, sitting before grandma. That'd be good though, right? No. Uh, please take time to read the announcements that are printed up in your bulletin. Uh, I won't read through all of them, but just take time for you to read through. And again, I'm glad I'm Pastor John Smith. I usually go with John R. Smith for formality purposes, but uh, retired pastors living in Alexandria now. Uh, some of you may remember me. I spent 24 years in Cyrus, nine years plus full t in a little place called Swift Falls between Glenwood and Benson. And up until a year ago, I spent five years as an interim in Benson and Swift Falls. So. I'm acquainted with this area a little bit. So, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, let us begin our worship service this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us now confess our sin, trusting in the abundance grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out of Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Oh, 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray now. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the sea while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the name of the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, 
No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands upon them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, the Gospel Affirmation is printed in your worship folder. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. Alleluia! A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many of you remember the old folk song, Michael Rowe, the Shark? Some of, I see some nods out there. Do you remember it was one verse? The River Jordan is deep, is wide and deep. Do you remember that? Well, I hate to say it. The Jordan rather, River is neither wide nor is it deep. It starts up at Banis in the Golan Heights by Mount Hermon, and there are seven small springs that come together very quickly. And the interesting thing about those springs is the water is so crystal clear, so clean, that you literally can drink it without getting sick. Those seven streams come together very quickly, and they flow south down Mount Hermon till they reach the Sea of Galilee. They flow through the Sea of Galilee. And on the south side, some Christian organizations have built a baptismal site where they poured concrete into the river so you could rent a white baptismal gown and walk out and be baptized by some preacher. But from that point down, it flows all the way down to the Sea of Galilee. Or not the Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea. Unfortunately, that last part from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea is probably no more, very little. When you leave the water leaves the Sea of Galilee, it's very green with algae. Think about getting baptized in that. 
I served, I, I didn't serve, I worked two summers at Bethsaida on the north side of the Sea of Galilee in, from, in 2008 and 2009. In those days, at the beginning of this century, or the 2000, the government, the Israeli government realized that since Israel was very arid, they could sell water. So they began draining the Jordan River so that by the time it left the Sea of Galilee, there was no more water. Uh, I know because in 2008 to 2009, the Sea of Galilee, the shoreline went down over 150 feet. Where the spot in the middle of the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea, you could walk across the Jordan River and not get your ankles wet. It's pure mud. And in fact, it was helping kill the Dead Sea. All, well, the one thing I remember is when they sold the water, native Jewish people could get it for one price. But if you were not Jews, you paid five to seven times more for that water. Still, we're told in our gospel for today that it was on the sea or the shores of the Jordan, Jordan between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea that John the Baptist gathered a group of people who were seeking to find God. Now, this group of people wasn't composed of the elite or the very religious or the very holy people of the day. They weren't the self-righteous or the con confident faithful. They were the people that were neglected by the church at that time. Why then would these people submit themselves to John's harangue, his accusations of sin, and his call to repentance? No. This group of people that gathered around John were full of people who were uncertain, despairing, looking for a second chance. Some sure that no more chances were available. For the people who gathered around John were sinners. And they came to the dirty Jordan to add their own dirt to the flowage, hoping that somehow in John's baptism they could receive hope, that they could receive salvation, hoping that somehow in John's baptism, that river, God would wash away all which kept them from being whole. On that day, Mark tells us that Jesus of Nazareth came to see John. I don't know how many of you realize that this baptism is the very first story that Mark tells of Jesus. Mark doesn't tell us about Jesus' birth or his circumcision or being 12 years old. After announcing in the opening verse that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. The first image we have of Jesus is that of a man hanging out with a bunch of desperate souls running out to the Jordan River to repent. 
Why is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the spotless Lamb of God, there? Why is Jesus seeking to be baptized? Matthew, Luke, John also wrestled with this, adding arguments between John and Jesus, or ignoring Jesus' baptism altogether. Mark, however, leaves us simply with the image of a Savior coming to that dirty water for baptism, unexplained, unadorned. And our Lord enters the dirt-filled water of the Jordan. He joins the rabble in that water where they have drugged their sins that cling so closely. He shares in the beautiful, the dirty water with the beautiful, the dirty people. And only after this, Mark tells us that, and just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. I don't know why. But when I read this passage from Mark, I often imagine sort of a shadow appearing over the riverbank. A big cross-shaped shadow. For in this beginning of Jesus' journey, in this humble encounter with with the muck and the mire of all creation and the broken and despairing of humanity, the cross looms as the ultimate outcome of the one who will go to any length to save us and to love us. For the saving work of Jesus doesn't begin and end in the cross, in the resurrection. No, for it's here in the waters of the Jordan that the gift, the saving, the loving, and our new life begins. But Jesus was indeed clean when he went into that water. He needed nothing to be washed away. It was done for him, it was done for us. For you and I need a savior who does more than pity us from a distance. We need a savior willing to put on the dirt, our dirt, to give us the gift of life. Gregory of Nazianzus, who lived over 300 years after Jesus, wrote of Jesus' baptism. As a man, he was baptized, but he absorbed sins as God. For he needed no purifying rites himself. His purpose was to hollow the water. In doing this, Jesus has given us a way of knowing that we are cleansed by his blood. He has given us a means of grace that once and for all connects us to his life, his death, and his resurrection. For in doing this, Jesus gives us a gift that bestows the Spirit on all of us for a lifetime and more. For that is the sacrament of holy baptism. <clears throat> After 
my second parish, Swift Falls. I went to a place, you know, Kahnemawak, Wisconsin, about 35 miles west of Milwaukee, to serve as a co-pastor with in youth and education, social ministry. Dr. Martin Luther Church was a congregation of about 1,400 people. It was an older congregation with little growth happening. Other than for our closest friends, we didn't have many baptisms. And because of that, most of our funerals weren't held in the church. Not like out here. Most of the funerals were held in the local funeral homes. With very small people attending, or very small groups of people attending. And because of that, at the funerals, I would often talk about baptism and what it meant in the life of the believer and the church. For like this story of Jesus' baptism, the water that we were baptized in begins the journey to the cross and to death. As the funeral service begins with the promise from Romans that tells us that we have been baptized into Christ's death, so too are we baptized into his resurrection. We root the end of life in the baptismal waters poured so long ago. While I was there one time, a leader of the congregation, Michael, stopped me one day after a funeral. It seems a friend of his who was a member of the Baptist church in town, had been at that funeral <coughs> and had asked Michael, why does your preacher talk so much about baptism at every funeral? Well, Michael was taken back by surprise and asked, asked me what he should say to that man. We talked a while. And I sort of wondered aloud what they talked about at his friend's church at funerals. Michael sensed that he should find out before we settled on an answer. So off he went. A couple of weeks later, I asked Michael what had come of that conversation with his friend. He smiled and said he asked his friend what they had talked about uh, at his church when someone died. And his friend said, well, they talked about Jesus and how he had died on the cross for us. He said that they had talked about how they hoped that Jesus would welcome the soul of the dead. How the person who had died was a good person worthy of salvation. And the friend said that they pray that Jesus would have mercy on the sinner's soul who had died. And let him or her enter the gates of heaven. Michael said he looked at his friend and he said, there's the difference. We don't wonder if we're going to be with the Lord. We know for sure. Michael's friend responded, well, how do you know that? Michael said, it's because of our baptism. For that water is a promise. And I don't wonder, I know. Michael said to me that once his friend told me what he expected at a funeral, 
he knew how to answer him. And the gates of heaven opened up. And the spirit rested upon Michael like a dove. And, Mike, and God said, Michael, my beloved, you are my child forever. Look at that baptismal cord. Look at it. And remember the lesson for today. For on that, that day, the heavens opened up. And the Spirit rested upon you like a dove. And God said, You are my beloved. You are my child forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ Jesus, living together in trust and hope. Let us now confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our croplands and the water that feeds it, wind and wild beasts and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all 